Hey guys, uh, I'm Zach, and I'm going to be going over Bloom's Taxonomy with you as my historical event. Um, I chose this historical event basically just because it it allowed in the 50s and 60s for education and public schools to just kind of choose curriculums based on each community and what children, the level of children were actually learning at. So it's very helpful as like a gauge of what curriculum should be taught. So let's just get into it. Um, just some background on Bloom's Taxonomy. In 1956, an educational committee at the University of Chicago was led by uh, Benjamin Bloom, who I believe was a professor at the school at the time, and him and other community committee members developed um, just kind of a new curriculum and a new style of learning to be implemented in schools to help with their comprehension of certain lessons. Uh, but the official definition of Bloom's Taxonomy is that it contains six categories of cognitive skills and they range from lower order skills to higher order skills. Um, basically just mean like your lower, order, your lower order cognitive functioning is like first the first time you learn addition and subtraction or early forms of literacy and the alphabet. They, they require lower cognitive function but they give you the tools to succeed and that contributes to it achieving the, uh, the higher function skills. Um, but this process is a hierarchical system and allows newly assimilated skills to generate from previously assimilated skills. And it kind of resembles Eric Erickson's theory of psychosocial development and it models that challenges, those challenges individuals have to overcome to kind of develop properly. So as the student or the child navigates that hierarchical system, they need to complete every stage so that they can understand the next one and succeed in the next one. Um, but in my, in my opinion, the system was placed in American education to instill that desired curriculum, like I said before, and that's measured through either formative assessment through each stage or through summative assessment by the time they're actually using these uh, newly assimilated skills in a practical environment. Um, but the whole uh, reason Bloom's taxonomy became a standard in the 50s and 60s was to help restructure that education system to be more efficient. You're, you're developing child child's cognitive abilities and giving them Actually, you're actually giving them information that should be learned and not just filling their head with a bunch of junk. Um, but the world has changed uh, since it was instilled. And since the 50s and 60s, it's only been revised once in 2001. Um, and many, many people in education are arguing that it should be revised again or something more geared around student-centered classrooms should be more the norm rather than something like this, which is more direct instruction. Um, but I think if we could take Bloom's taxonomy and kind of warp it to a mold that fits student-centered learning, you could absolutely do that. Um, but with all that being said, it is still the um, it's still the chosen way to deliver curriculum to students in education today, and I think it still makes a, a big impact as it did in the '50s and '60s. All right, that's about all I have. So uh, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the Christmas lights. I turned them on just for you so I'll uh, respond to all your videos too or I think we only have to do three but um, I'll try to give you some good feedback I hope you guys give me some good feedback and if there's anything I left out you can just let me know all right thanks guys